Well, good day viewers. Today we have a 2015 Nissan Rogue. It's here because the MIL is reported to have been on. It was on when I drove it in the shop. The customer has replaced the three easy spark plugs on the front and he wants me to change the rest of them. Oh joy. So we're going to scan this thing for codes before we start and uh, see what, uh, what the codes give us. Some Hopefully the codes will give us some direction. So this will be a new vehicle record, as I've never scanned this vehicle before. Nissan, it should auto ID. Automatic ID. Pulled the mileage out of it. I should have turned the heater fan off. It's down to 11.2 volts. Forming a system call, checks to see what modules are available on the network. This usually takes a couple, about a minute, minute and a half. Well, we'll pick up when we get to the end of this. Okay, so it's ID'd what modules are available. We're going to do a code scan. And this is a pre-scan because we haven't worked on it yet. I think he told me it had an EVAP code. Very small leak, yeah. CVT judder inspection current code. Hmm, that's not a nice code. Four controllers analyzed so far. Well, we'll pick up when we get to the end of this code scan. I put a battery charger on it. That's why it's 13.2 volts now. So we're finished the network code scan. We got a P0456, very small leak in the EVAP system. Could be filler cap. P17F1, CVT judder. Problem with the HVAC sun load sensor circuit. And a round view monitor codes. You can a communication code. Multi audio visual codes. And in the OBD2 side of it, uh, P0456. So no misfire codes to speak of. Um, we'll have a look and see what's common on this. We'll have a look at the gas cap and maybe do some EVAP testing. But I don't want to run the engine because I need to change the spark plugs. So first remove the air induction system. There's two 6 mil bolts, one here and one here. And then that lifts out of there. Then there's two six mil bolts that hold four six mil bolts that hold the cover on. Take the cover off. And now we see what we're up against. This intake manifold has to come off. The customer has already replaced these three plugs under the coils here. But the back ones are under the intake manifold. So we're gonna have to see what's involved in taking this intake off. Obviously we gotta remove the air cleaner. Well, is that reservoir just sitting there? Yeah, that maybe that reservoir will come out of the out of the way too, because it's remote reservoir to the master cylinder, which is way down there. Oh well, we'll have a look in the service literature. So I looked at the procedure here, and basically it says to remove a bunch of solenoids. These solenoids are uh, this is uh, actually this is the purge solenoid here. One of these is to control the intake manifold runner. Another one is control the motor mount, I believe. But I see that one goes off to that diaphragm there. So regardless, there are two coolant lines to the throttle body, but I think we're going to take the throttle body off and leave it off to the side. That way we don't have to disconnect the coolant lines. Um, there's a bunch of vacuum hoses. It doesn't mention any braces at the back there, but there is a vacuum hose back there that we have to disconnect. I've already removed the air induction system by removing the hose clamp and the uh, PCV fresh air hose right here and the upper and lower sections. You maybe don't have to remove the lower section but I took it out because there's only one bolt holding it in place. So I removed the four retaining bolts. There's seven mil hex on the throttle body and just leave the lines attached. You can leave the electrical connector plugged in although I unplugged it. Uh, take the vacuum hoses off this one here and remove all the pipes leave them attached to the 
solenoids so you don't forget where they go. The uh, purge solenoid, I took it off as an assembly down here. And that basically frees up all of the, the bolts. Now we do have the one vacuum line at the back there, but we're gonna leave that on there just temporarily and see if there's any braces at the back of the intake. It doesn't show them in the service literature. Well, that wasn't so bad. There are two hoses on the back. So this is the brake booster hose here, and this is the PCV hose. Just take off the hose clamps. And then there's one little clip down here at the back of the intake manifold that I imagine is an O2 sensor connector. You can see it there, the cable running down. It looks like an O2 sensor connector. Boy, that would be fun to change that O2 sensor. You have to pull the intake manifold off. The connector sits right underneath here. But that comes out pretty easily. Now we're gonna stuff some paper toweling in the intake port so that nothing falls in there. So I actually did remove the two studs in the corners here. Uh, you need a, it, and that will allow me to move the manifold straight forward rather than lifting it up two inches. Uh, the two studs, you need an E8 or an E6 socket to take the end of the stud out. So that's this one and this one down here. Now we're gonna just disconnect the coils see the throttle body is off to the side here and it's still connected so we're going to have to drain the coolant like it says in the manual. Three six mil bolts to hold the coils in and remove the spark plugs. So there's the three plugs out. They look perfectly clean. Burning natural, nice tan color to them. They probably were fine. You could have probably left them alone. But being proactive and doing some maintenance. Uh, they're 9 sixteenths by the way. So you need a 9 16 spark plug socket. You can use a 9 16 uh, deep socket, which is what I used, and a magnet to fish them out of there afterwards. So we're going to put the new plugs in, find a torque spec. It's probably about 20 to 25 foot-pounds because they're aluminum heads. So I like to put a little bit of Never Seize on the spark plug threads. That's just my personal opinion. I've been doing that for quite a few years now, and I've never had a problem removing it. Now this is a old tool, probably older than most of my viewers, uh, is for starting spark plugs. You could use a piece of vacuum hose or if you had an actual uh, 14 mil spark plug socket that would be fine. Well, that was painful to find. You'd think it'd be in the procedure, but anyways, spark plug torque is 14 foot-pounds. These ones are uh, actually uh, 12 millimeter threads instead of 14. 14 millimeter spark plugs going into aluminum head, typically about 18 to 20. But these are 14 foot-pounds, and the intake manifold is torqued, first step, 5.2 foot-pounds, not 5, 5.2, second step, 19. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all we really need to know. 14 foot-pounds. Okay, put a little dielectric grease on the end of the boot. Just to enhance water, keeping water out. A little dielectric grease around the outside perimeter of the, the seal here. And then reinstall it back into its location. Reconnect the connector. Where is it? Right here. Make sure it snaps in. And these bolts, they're probably about five foot pounds if you need to torque them, but I, I just tighten them by hand. They don't have to be that tightened down.
and make sure the wires are tucked away so they're not going to get pinched and we're ready to reassemble I'm going to clean this gasket surface off just wipe it off with some brake cleaner and wipe off the surfaces of the intake manifold and reinstall the intake so there's the intake manifold back on air induction system and air cleaner back in place oh I still got to tighten the hose clamp there uh, I did change one little piece of vacuum hose here because it was split one of these hoses was split so that's all other than that and we're ready to start this thing up I'm gonna leave the cover off because I'm gonna check this solenoid to make sure it's working properly although a small leak code is probably uh, something other than that solenoid could be the vent solenoid but I need to put it up on the hoist to check that stuff but nevertheless I'm gonna run it uh, I got the mass airflow sensor plugged in again so I was checking to see if there's any freeze frame data attached to this P17F1 I think that's why the customer might have opted to change the spark plugs because he might have thought there was a misfire. Uh, I don't see anything in here. Let's see if there's any information about this fault code. And it was P17F1. Seven. Yeah, of course not. Well, we'll check identifix to see if there's any troubleshooting tips in there. So here's the P17F1 search and identifix, and here's a case, has a continuously variable transmission judder code, P17F1. Maybe there's a TSB on this. Let's see this TSB. Nope, oh, it's not available. Let's go back. I thought it was here. Maybe it's been updated a couple of times. CVT Judder and P17F1 store. Let's see what this TSB suggests. 2015 to 17 Quest. Well, this is a rogue. Bulletin has been superseded by NTB 1739E. Please discard previous versions of this bulletin. Well, why don't you just take it out of the system then? It's electronic. Rano Quest. Let's see what this has to say. Maybe there's a policy adjustment. They're going to replace the transmission under warranty. Ultima, Murano, Maxima, Pathfinder, and Quest. Where's Rogue? The transmission judder, as described above, is not reported. This bulletin does not apply. Are not stored, this bulletin. If any DTCs are stored other than 17F1, this bulletin does not apply. And hand diagnostic logic for CVT judder has reprogramming instructions that apply. Customer reports transmission jutter, shake, shutter, single or multiple bumps or vibrations. DTC 17F0 or 17F1 found stored. Remove the control valve body. Perform CVT chain inspection. Uh oh. This is not looking good. I didn't say they extended a policy on this. Well, we're not going to go in there and remove the valve body and inspect the chain. Well, I'm going to do a little research. So after reviewing this uh, TSB dated March 25th, 20, although it doesn't specifically state that it applies to the Rogue, uh, it's pretty intense. Basically what it boils down to is inspecting the CV cheat chain and I'll scroll down to the bottom here so you can see what we'd be looking for but in order to do that means pulling the valve body off I don't know why this is frozen now there we go and it's quite detailed to remove the valve body I'll find the picture so once the valve body is removed you can use a bore scope to inspect the mating surfaces of the chain basically 
these two wear surfaces. It's like a snowmobile drive belt, but a steel chain. And basically that's what a good chain should look like. Inspect these surfaces. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. But these are damaged. Scuff marks, pitting, wear indicates that the chain needs to be replaced and probably other components in the CVT. But if the chain is bad, then removal of the CVT is the next step. So I believe the customer was re replacing the plugs because he thought it had a misfire. Uh, the check engine light and the small leak in the EVAP system is a secondary minor issue compared to this. I'm going to clear all the codes out of all the controllers. I'm sure the customer didn't pull the code from the transmission controller because he's probably using an OBD2 scan tool and it couldn't access the transmission side of things. Um, I'm going to clear all the codes out of all the controllers. I'm going to do some testing on the EVAP system, although that, like I said, that's minor. And I'm going to take it for a road test and see if I can feel the shutter, shut, judder. And we'll go from there. So key on engine off, I'm going to clear all codes right by code scan. I do have a clean battery charger hooked up to it at 13 and a half volts. Pretty much essential nowadays to have a battery charger and a clean one at that to ensure that the battery voltage doesn't drop during programming events or during testing because that generates a bunch of codes. Now this is going to take several seconds so I'll, I'll pause. Well that was painfully slow. That had to take in about two and a half minutes, one of the slower ones I've seen. But we cleared con con codes out of 16 computers. I'm going to go into the engine control computer now and see if there's any bi-directional controls of the uh, EVAP solenoids. I imagine this has, I know it has a purge solenoid because I see it on the intake manifold. Actuator tests. Let's see what we got. Uh, engine mounts. VIAS. Power balance. Cooling fan. Exhaust valve. Purge. Volume control. Fuel tank temp sensor. What would you do with the fuel tank temp sensor? I'm curious. What the heck is that? Well, that's secondary. Purge volume control solenoid. Key on engine off. I would imagine it commands it to duty cycle. We should be able to hear it. It's pretty quiet. I don't hear anything. I'm going to go look. feel any activity on that purge solenoid but I'm not 100% certain that this test actually works I don't see a vacuum control solenoid special functions let's see if we can run an evap test self-learning tiger IRO saving data for replacing ECU writing data to replace CPU no Generic functions, I don't think this is going to be it. No, that's just as its name implies, generic functions. Well, where's the EVAP testing? Fuel injection VIAS. I think that's VVT, but... Intake valve time assign angle. Exhaust valve time assign angle. FPCM fuel pump control module. Well, I gotta see if I can find a EVAP test. Well, here's a service bulletin on that P0456. Interesting, it says except leaf, you think, considering the leaf is all electric, wouldn't have even a gas tank. Uh, caused by a loose fill cap, EVAP leak has been detected where the vent control valve mounts to the canister. The vent control valve will ring is determined to be the cause. Okay, so there's a little O-ring that could be causing it. It doesn't mention anything about running an EVAP test. Hmm. Normally these vehicles will allow you to run like a purge and seal test or a performance test or bypass the cold soak timer test. But I don't see that capability. 
Well, here's the code setting criteria for P0456, which is technically a small leak. It detects a leak in the UVAP line between the fuel tank and the canister purge volume control solenoid valve using the negative pressure caused by a decrease of fuel temperature in the fuel tank after turning the ignition off. So it basically has a pressure sensor on the UVAP canister and it watches for a pressure decrease because the fuel is cooling off in the tank. It makes no mention of uh, running a diagnostic test here it says very small leak threshold evap system has a leak threshold two evap system does not operate correct properly they don't even know how it works so uh, other than inspecting the filler cap that's about all we're going to do at this point uh, I was reading this here it says with consult which is their scan tool turn the ignition on and select evap diag ready in the data monitor that's basically the the uh, OBD2 monitors start the engine and wait at idle until off of evap diag ready changes to on in other words till it till it does its own self test it will take at most two hours until off of evap diag ready changes to on turn the ignition switch off and wait at least 90 minutes never turn the ignition switch on during the 90 minutes turn the ignition switch on and select evap leak diag with consult check the the leak diag indication pass or fail I would imagine so they don't mention anything about doing any kind of bi-directional test which is absolutely insane so at this point other than inspecting the gas cap and clearing the code uh, and again this is probably very minor compared to the judder code in the CVT so we're gonna take it for a road test so here is the uh, maintenance or readiness monitors. I've cleared the code so a whole bunch of them are not complete. So this is the one in question here. EVAP system not complete. We're going to take it for a road test and of course it's going to run an EVAP test hopefully. Uh, as long as the fuel tank is not completely full or or less than 10 percent usually it'll run an EVAP test. It's, it's above freezing today. In fact it's gorgeous today. And we're going to look at some uh, data in the transmission computer while we road test it. I did check the CVT fluid. It looks normal. It looks like lightly or dark uh, engine oil. It's not pink like most transmission fluids. Uh, let's look at data. I wonder if it has any slip ratio numbers or anything like that. Well, I'll just record this data on a road test. Well, the transmission appears to be working properly. Acceleration from a stop. Now that was light acceleration. RPMs down to around 1400. Let's try a little bit moderate, more heavy acceleration for the stop.
so I'm saving this CVT data. The transmission seemed to work fine on that road test. I might drive it to town tomorrow, but I noticed it's actually a Murano, not a Rogue. I, I don't know why I had it in my head that it was a Rogue, probably because I worked on one a few days ago. But nevertheless, we're saving this CVT data, so if, in case I want to analyze it later. And I'm going to look and see if there's any pending codes in the transmission controller. Codes. Yeah, that one came back. Wow, I never felt anything unusual. CV inspection. That one did come back, but I... I never really felt any unusual occurrence in the way the transmission seemed to work. Let's look at uh, in the engine control computer and see if it's run the maintenance monitors yet. I did put some silicone grease on the fuel cap o-ring. It looked okay, but it could have been leaking. Uh, generic functions, readiness monitors. And it's about a quarter tank of gas, so it could possibly have... Let's see what ran this cycle. No, see, it's not complete, so it hasn't run the test. No, I'm going to discuss it with the customer. Um, I never really felt any unusual shuddering or juddering. The transmission seemed to perform like any other CVT that I've driven. But we'll see what he has to say. I might drive it to town and back. So that's, that's it for now. I'll probably post a follow-up in the comments. So I just did a code clear and it did not clear that code. So maybe that code isn't clearing for whatever reason. Let's shut it off. Turn it back on again. And read codes. See, it's not clearing that code, and I don't know why. Clear codes. Are you sure? Key on engine off. Yes, it is. If codes persist, try again key on engine off. Well, it was key on engine off. So I'll shut the key off. Ignition off. Turn it back on. And read codes. See, I didn't think I felt anything, so it's not clearing that code. Let me try it running. Let's see if it'll clear with it running. Let's read it. So how do we clear that code? Hmm. Try a different scan tool. Okay, I'm going to try this uh, Autel MaxiSys. Read the VIN and see if it'll decode it. And that's okay. So it's a Z52. Let's go into diagnosis, control unit, transmission. Read codes. Continue surveillance transmission jetter. Okay. Escape. Erase codes. Key on engine off, it says. Yes. Yes. Read codes to verify. Let's cycle the key. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. Read codes. Wasn't that special? So I got two high end scan tools that won't clear the code from this thing. Oh well.